Okay, moving on to pneumothorax. This one, it's an abnormal collection of air in the pleural space. That's going to be right here. I like to bring this up because of acupuncture in the chest area. You can give someone a pneumothorax. Okay, let's talk spontaneous pneumothorax. Curves in commonly the tall Ichabod crane kind of guy. Young, 20s, 30s, uh, adds smoking to that, and 20 times more likely to suffer spontaneous pneumo compared to non-smokers. Other things that will add risk is increasing intrathoracic pressure, screaming, coughing, valsalva. That will increase your risk. So if you're Ichabod Crane and you smoke and you're screaming at a football game, watch out. You might drop a lung. Patients with COPD and numerous other lung diseases are also at increased risk, as are patients with Marfan. So again, that's a tall, lanky guy. They typically are the ones that are at greatest risk. That's for spontaneous. Classically presents with acute onset of dyspnea, okay, shortness of breath, and chest pain in the area that's occurring. The pain is described as sharp and stabbing and worsens with inspiration, so there's a pleuritic component to it. Patients with acute spontaneous pneumo may present with tachypnea, it's rapid breathing, fast heart rate, decreased breath sounds on the side of the pneumo. That's real important to remember because if you suspect a pneumo, you've got to listen to the chest. Patient loses consciousness, becomes hypotensive, or you see JVD, jugular venous distension. The pneumothorax in this case may have progressed to a tension pneumo, and that's a life-threatening event. Paramedics are all trained very acutely to be aware of that. So let's see here. If uh, Let me just finish this slide or two. Diagnosis is confirmed by chest x-ray. Radiographically, a pneumo is suggested by hyperlucency, that's a darker area on the chest film. Lack of pulmonary markings, which shows that the lung parenchyma isn't at the periphery anymore. If standard chest films fail to demonstrate anything, just have them take a big breath and blow it out. And then during expiration, the air in the pleural space cannot be exhaled on the pathologic side. Thus, the affected hemithorax cannot decrease in volume to the same degree as the normal lung, and that should make it show up. Treatment, uh, you just kind of watch them conservatively if it's about 15% or less. Patients may be admitted to hospital for observation if they have any other things going on, you know, makes them like diabetes or older age, etc. And the air is reabsorbed at about 2% per day, so after about seven days should be re-expanded. Alternatively, patients may be discharged home with close follow-up. That's after you watch them a bit, about four hours. Larger pneumo or those patients with underlying comorbidities like COPD, heart disease, etc., they might need a uh, chest tube, okay? And those aren't any fun. That hurt. They hurt like hell, by the way. Here's a pneumothorax, so it looks like. This is from an AIDS patient. So if you look over here, you've got your uh, chest wall. That's the parietal pleura here. And then here's the lung tissue with the visceral pleura. Okay, and, the, and you got this big space here. Normally that doesn't exist there. And you can see the big space here too. Okay, so you got seriously collapsed lungs. Whole lung is collapsed. And um, if you listen on this side, the pathologic side, and then compare it to this side here, you'll hear breath sounds on this side, and then decreased or absent breath sounds on the affected side. So you just listen back and forth in a ladder stepwise fashion, go down and down, okay, and then uh, you should be able to make the diagnosis. You know, one this big, of course, they'll have all kinds of symptoms too. Shortness of breath, um, desaturated hemoglobin, if you had an SAO2 monitor. Uh, in the event of a tension pneumo, there isn't really anything you can do, uh, except to maybe notice that it could be that, dial 911. Uh, what we used to do is carry around a, I used to carry around a 10 gauge IV catheter, a short one that's about two and a half inches long, with a stopcock attached to it. And if you suspect a tension pneumo, you stick it right here in the second intercostal space, right here. And then if your diagnosis is correct, you'll hear a large swooshing sound as the air is blown back out. And then you close the stopcock, and that buys you time. That just, re, that just got all the air out of the chest. Because under with a tension pneumo, what happens is that all the air, you, you entrain air into this area here under pressure. Okay, this whole area becomes under great pressure with each breath. 
and it forces the media style structures over to the other side and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, let me just review these. Spontaneous pneumo occurs when an air filled blister on the lung surface ruptures. That's like it with COPD when a bulla ruptures or you can put them on a ventilator and those high pressures will cause it to rupture or give you a pneumothorax. Traumatic pneumo that's from getting shot you know, catching a bullet in the chest that's got a different name, that's a sucking chest wound. Tension pneumo occurs when the intrapleural pressure exceeds atmospheric and with each breath, just like a like a suction, uh, I'm sorry, a uh, sucking chest wound, you push all the structures over and that can compromise life. Okay, it's really dangerous. Uh, I pulled this off of a hospital, it's like for nurses, and I just want to explain to you how a little pneumothorax really might just make them anxious, okay? They might just so what I what I tell people is, as you uh, needle someone, you know they should feel better when they're done with the treatment, and if the patient feels a little uneasy, anxious, not quite right, check vitals right away. Look for tachycardia and increased respiratory rate. You don't have to worry about temperature. And um, and then review where you put your needles, and think about if any of them could have gotten into lung. So any chest needles or any on the back, the back shoe points, anything like that, might be reason enough to think you gave them a pneumo. So if that's the case, then uh, the best thing you can do is that patient must get somewhere to get a chest film and have it evaluated. Okay, so you might only see a little bit of tachypnea, anxiety, maybe some tachycardia, and that might be it. If it's a bigger one, cyanosis, but probably not. And then you want to listen to the chest as, as well, like I explained earlier. You're listening for decreased or absent breath sounds. Now that one woman who gave that elderly woman a pneumothorax at five branches, you know, she was just a little anxious from what I understand of the case. I wasn't there, but it was a room full of people and not one of them made any kind of a proper assessment of the patient. When you need to assess somebody, you know, if something you think is wrong, Get your vital signs, okay? That's all you have to do is check your vitals and then listen to the chest in this case. Okay, now I I know I understand that most of you aren't real familiar with using stethoscopes once you get out, but keep a stethoscope handy because in this case, you're gonna wanna listen, you should. This will keep you out of courtroom too. Here's what it looks like if it's uh, just a minor one. And just watch it for a while. You know, if it gets better, you send them out the door. And uh, if not, you know, you get another chest film. And if it's not looking good, then you may have to call surgery for a chest tube. We'll put a chest tube in, that reinflates it. Here's what a tension pneumo looks like. So all this air here, you get a huge increase in air, which generates pressure where it's not supposed to be. There isn't supposed to be any pressure in there. And it shifts everything over this way to the right. Now remember the heart, here's the heart here, okay? Heart's supposed to be over here. So everything got pushed over. You can put your fingers in the middle of the uh, sternal notch and feel for the trachea. It should be between your two fingers. And if it's not, that means uh, it could have some tracheal shifting there and that's one of the ways you can tell. They'll also be heading towards shock and unconsciousness too. Here's a pneumothorax. You can see the line of the lung tissue. All this out here is air. And here it looks a little clearer. Yeah, actually, you got the margin all the way down to here. So sometimes it's more hyperloose and it's darker in this area. This one isn't the best film, though. This is a hydrothorax. Same thing. Could be fluid or air. We're talking air in, th in this case with acupuncture. 19-year-old woman suddenly left chest pain while walking. Pain resolved but occurred three hours later with more intensity and associated shortness of breath. After a syncopal period, she came to the hospital. Denied any trauma, previous pulmonary or pleural problems, recent flu-like symptoms or cough. She took no meds. In fact, was otherwise totally healthy except for a little chronic anemia. She exercises last menstrual period 17 days earlier. On exam, she's pale and short of breath. Initial heart rate was 102. Okay, so that's that's abnormal. That's tachycardia, anything 100 or higher. Blood pressure was 116 over 70, no big deal. Respiratory rate a little high, should be 20 or less. 
arterial oxygen saturation 95%. This is a 19 year old. She's on two liters supplemental oxygen. This is the big one here. This is the telltale. 95%, she'd read 100% uh, with a 19 year old on room air. So she's on two liters of oxygen. Still reading only 95%. That clearly shows something's not right. And then if you listen, breath sounds were clear on the right, decreased on the left. And then your chest radiographs show a large left hydropneumothorax without mediastinal shift, so none of the, you don't have it under tension. The right lung field and thoracic cage appeared normal. And if you look on the lateral, they put in a big uh, chest tube here. On entering pleural space, there was a rush of air, so kind of indicative of, of a uh, tension pneumo, but apparently not enough tension. But there was a lot of air being entrained in there, and then uh, 1,200 cc's of bloody fluid came out. Lung re-expanded, uh, but there was still some air leak. The air leak resolved after four days. They finally took the tube out, chest tube, 1,800, almost two liters drained out. Uh, and I can't tell you what the process was. Um, there wasn't any diagnosis here. I just want you to see the air fluid levels. Okay, it's right here. This is air and then fluid down here. This was blood. Pneumothorax summary. Always keep high index of suspicion when needling an area of the chest, especially near the shoulder blades or base of the neck. Uh, anywhere where there's lung tissue, so to about the 10th rib, always get a full set of vital signs just to be sure if you have any suspicions whatsoever. Just check them, write them down. If you're not comfortable getting heart rates and uh, blood pressures, which most of you are, um, you know what I did? I just got an automatic cuff. So then you get pulse and blood pressure all at once. Spend a few bucks, though, get a good ones, and then make sure you compare it to your own auscultation. Make sure that's actually reading accurately. So spend at least 100 bucks. Pneumothorax can present with anxiety as the only symptom and possibly slightly elevated respiratory rate as the only sign. Keep in mind that you'll have decreased breath sounds on the area that's affected. Especially listen in the armpit and listen at the top of on right lateral to the neck and the cupula. Okay, that little area right behind the collarbone. And uh, if they have a small pneumo, there's a good chance the breath sounds will be decreased in that area because it'll often drop at the apex. So you want to especially listen there and compare it to the other side. And then you're good to go. Write it all on the chart. If you do hear decreased breath sounds, then that person must go to an urgent care facility and have a chest film done. Now, if that person's stable, he or she can drive themselves or get a family member to do it. That might even be better. If they're unstable, that is to say shortness of breath, chest pain, decrease in uh, mental status, uh, they get a little goofy, anything like that, then you need to call an ambulance. Okay, sorry to say, but that's the best way to do it. And hopefully they have insurance. Oftentimes they don't, and then they really get screwed, you know, about $600 bill. Okay, let's move on to asthma and status asthmaticus. 